All right. Good Sunday morning. My name is Shua. And today, topic of the day, topic of the day is getting prepped for uh, commute cycling or biking to work or whatever you might call it. What's what goes into my routine? What I think should go into a routine? Because actually, there's more than you would think that goes into a daily routine for cycling to work. Let's start off super simple. And the first really, really simple one is get some sleep. The biggest thing you can do that's going to benefit you if you want to bike to work on, you know, if you have, if you go to the office five days a week and you want to bike five days a week, the best start is sleep. Make sure you're fully rested, whatever that means for you. I know some people say six hours, seven hours. My dad only gets five. I get eight every single night. Well, actually, that's not true. Last night I got seven. But I feel pretty good today. So seven works every once in a while. But I shoot for eight. Eight's usually my goal. Eight is probably the best. That's a that's a really big one. Uh, I know a lot of people. I don't know if it's because of all our phone screens or the internet or what it is, but I hear a lot of people say nowadays that they have insomnia. meet a lot of people that say that they have insomnia or they just lay there in bed at night and stuff like that. I don't know what the solution to that is. I'm not a doctor. I know what really has helped me um, limiting caffeine. I don't drink coffee in the morning anymore. I might have a decaf every once in a while just for the taste but I don't drink coffee on a regular basis every morning when I wake up and that'll actually bring us to point number two which is water it's a really really simple thing to drink plenty of water but you will be so surprised by how much better you feel after drinking consistently and regularly for you know even just a couple days and a lot of people will complain, oh, well, you know, I don't want to pee seven times a day. But I, I don't know if it's because I sweat more during my actual work day or what it is. But I found that when I drink a ton of water in a day, I actually don't pee that many more times. But if you're sitting around, maybe it does affect you. So maybe just adding one extra bottle of water would help. I know I try to hydrate as much as possible, especially in the summer. Last night, or yeah, sorry, yesterday had a yard yard shale that I was helping out with. We were sitting in the middle of a, a yard that was in the sun, not all day, but part of the day. And I got a little burned and I remembered to put on sunscreen on most of my body so the burn isn't too bad. It's more than I'd like. But the bigger thing is that I didn't drink enough water. And I can tell because today I still feel a little dehydrated. It's an unrelated topic, but I know back last year when I was still when I would still have a drink with dinner every once in a while. You'd wake up, 
especially after days like yesterday and you'd be dry and you know so even though I didn't drink a lot you would almost feel this kind of weird feeling in your head come to find out I was partially hung over which doesn't make sense but I'm gonna guess it has something to do with being so dehydrated I wouldn't know I'm not a good expert on that front because as I said I don't drink and that's not a point it's not point number three I'm just mentioning it some people have a high tolerance for alcohol I have a very low tolerance because I've never really drank but I'd say alcohol is no good if you're trying to bike commute all the time don't understand people the roads clear there is no reason for that person to pass me so close plenty of sleep drink I mean they obviously obvious the next good thing to do is uh, eat what I like to do especially if I know I'm gonna go for a ride is I'll make something like spaghetti the night before you know, something to really just carb up give your brain and your body plenty of energy to work with. All right, we're gonna enjoy this beautiful down. even really about when I say carb up I'm not saying like eat four servings of pasta I'm more implying you know have have a bowl of spaghetti and uh, have some garlic bread with it it's a lot easier for me to say because I don't eat meat so I don't have any like yeah it's not like I'm gonna be like oh I want steak or I want this I did make a mistake last night. I had a vegan hot dog, for, a vegan hot dog, and some other stuff for dinner. So it's Memorial Day weekend, and I'm kind of celebrating it as such. But tonight, because planning to do a ride over to a graveyard in Saco tomorrow, then I, at that day tomorrow, I plan to have a good breakfast I, I actually sorry I had I plan to have a good dinner tonight to get ready for tomorrow now that pollen starting to float back to the top of this body of water which isn't really that surprising I forgot to start my Strava it is what it is Go this way. Um, then after that comes kind of the, I mean, that's just the stuff to help you when you're out on the bike the next day. Some of the things, so 
if you're nervous and you're not sure i mean biggest suggestion i can give out of all of this and i'm kind of i'm a little ocd at times or all the time i guess but if you have a route that you've planned maybe during an off day you know it just you know because you gotta you're gonna have to start building your strength up anyway before you're cycle commuting to work every day so what i did last year i didn't do it this year because i felt like i was ready to roll this year then i've got an e-bike is go test your route on like a saturday or a sunday understand the big thing is you want to stay kind of around the same time because you want to try to mimic traffic but that's the biggest thing is understand there might be cars going in directions they don't go during the, the, the work week uh, sometimes on Sundays which is today I will get cars that are going towards the center of town that don't usually go that way that aren't usually out and about on you know Monday through Friday so just know that the traffic is probably gonna be different but make sure that you can actually ride on the roads that you are, were planning to I've I've looked at roads before and said nope I'm not doing that road or no I can't do that road um, like the road I came from this morning it has a very narrow shoulder when I was new to biking I didn't really like that road all that much. The only reason I chose it was because when I come out of the park I live in, if I take a left, that's a main route. And yeah, it has wide shoulders, but people are usually driving twice the speed as they are on that back road. That van that passed me this morning is kind of an exception. He was driving pretty fast. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 35 through there but you know it is what it is speed limits only apply when cops are around to drivers in this area so so that's another big tip is if you have a route picked out then you know kind of what you want to do to get to work i'd say go out and test it i tested mine for probably a month because back then i was oh look at that giant 23. I don't know if the camera caught that. Probably did. I was. Uh, I didn't have an e-bike at that point. It was back before I even knew if I could cycle to work. It's the first time I've ever lived close enough to a place that I worked. I always had jobs before this, save for one when I was on the road working out my own truck but every other job I've ever had I lived an hour away and there is no public transport in Maine there is in Portland but um, unfortunately what happens with buses in a lot of these cities everyone thinks they're dirty and they're gross and they don't make the poor and the, the hobos take them and that's just because they're inconsistent you know because of you know they don't have their own dedicated lanes they don't get priority at all through intersections or anything um, and because of that they get backed up so much that you know that schedule that's hanging on the on the wall you might be able to expect that for the first pickup but after that let's just take that schedule throw it away i remember i used to have to take the bus from the college I was going to over to the university where my dad works and one the bus only came to within a mile and a half of the university so I would have to get off a mile and a half and walk the rest of the way this was in winter mind you which honestly I've that's one of, one of the blessings I've always had because we lived far away from a lot of stuff when I was a kid we had a quarter store that I could walk to so during the summers in the morning I would do a big loop I would walk from my parents house up to the store and then I would walk 
probably three miles down the street and then into a little back trail that led back home. So I would take two different, I'd do a giant circle. Oh, it was awesome. I used to love doing that. I walked a ton those summers. But I also had an affinity for sitting around and playing Xbox. So ended up gaining a lot of weight throughout those years. And then when I get to college, college was kind of when uh, College was when I started doing a lot of, um, you know, you do a lot of studying and then you don't have time to go for a walk. So, you now there was a couple of years there where I didn't own a bike. I got my first job in college because that was 2014. It was after the economy kind of started to come back. And so once I got a job, I was pretty much working and driving everywhere. Now there was no time to exercise. I didn't go for walks daily anymore. I didn't go for bike rides. I pretty much was just work and sleep and school, which I hate. It's, that cycle right there crushes my soul whenever I hear it because I can just remember those days that it was wake up, go to work, get home from work, get ready, go to school. Or a lot of times it was wake up, go to work, go to school, go home. You know, you were gone for like, not 24 hours. So actually, no, some days it was longer than 24 hours. All right, I think we're gonna. We'll see how bad the car traffic is. It's Sunday morning, so it really shouldn't be bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Another big thing you can do that I found helps me is the day before. I know it kind of makes you feel like a high school kid, but if you know what you're gonna wear, if you have a uniform, set it aside. That person was nice enough to slow down because he saw another car coming and he also moved over. He's a contender now for Pass of the week. It all depends how everyone else does this week. That van that passed me this morning is not a contender. That was horrible. But yeah, I I try to at least set my clothes aside. I don't always pack them. What I also do, and if you have a job that allows it, perfect. I work a mechanical trades job, so I don't need to show up every day in a clean uniform. I just need to show up ready to work. That was a poor kitty. Jesus. We're not gonna go into that. We're not gonna go into that, not right now. Yep, yeah, um, such clothes up before. Day before works fine. What I can do at work is I actually take my clothes for the week into work, which is actually just two pairs of pants, a couple uniform shirts, and then every day I bring fresh, I bring fresh socks, and I bring fresh underwear, and that's it. It's as simple as that, and it actually works out pretty smooth. I did it last year. The issue is my bike gets so heavy. I'm carrying clothes around all week. Came to a point where I, I didn't want to do it anymore. So I said, I'm not doing it anymore. What's this in the street? Yeah, it's just a piece of foam. I'm not coordinated enough to stop and pick everything up, so I don't.
the worst uphill I have all day. I'm trying to think of what I had next on the list. Pre-pack your stuff. Charge your lights. Make sure you take your lights off and charge them because nothing will give you more anxiety than waking up in the morning and realizing that all your lights are dead. I don't need my headlamp every morning, which is actually on my handlebars, but the mornings I need it, I need it. Not to see, I usually don't go out when it's that dark, unless it's fall and it's still warm out. I use it more in the mornings when it's sunny so that everyone can see me. All right. Sounds like a motorcycle behind. I don't know if he's coming this way though. Definitely hear a car coming though from behind and one from the front. Two cars behind and in front. cars think that if uh, if there's no room for them to move over that they can just plow by you it's like no that's not how that works big the last big help you can give yourself when you're you know trying to plan for tomorrow is uh once you have everything once you have everything ready just go ahead and pack your bag i'm uh i'm in a transitionary period at the moment last year i did all panniers to and from work and the panniers are nice but they don't, the rack on my rad bike versus the rack on my road bike are two different sizes. So there's a space there that needs to go in for the pannier to fit on my rad. And I have to adjust the little black sash mount thing. So because of that, Technology Connections made a really cool video about that car, the Ionis. I gotta finish it, I only watched half of it. I was on break at work and it popped up on the fuck cars forum. So I'm like, okay, I'll watch that. I'm in the transitionary period. So the panniers are nice and I like them, but what I'd really like to be able to do because my big thing is weekend rides. So last year for weekend rides, I would load all my tools and an extra water bottle into a pannier bag. But that weight can be kind of annoying. I don't notice it all the time, but those times you do notice it is when it's really, really annoying. Because you're, you know, you're doing something, you're trying to go between stuff, and then the pannier catches on something. And you forgot because 
if you're lopsided. So what I tried to do was put it on my on my uh, left side so I could see it in the mirror. But even then, it gets caught on stuff. I'm talking like, because if I do Eastern Trail, like I'm doing tomorrow, there's posts in the ground to keep cars off. That was a good pass. He might actually be a contender as well. Alright. Attack this hill a little bit. Those are my big suggestions for that. One big thing I would also add, which I feel like I'm pretty good at, give yourself plenty of time. Don't stress it the first couple days because it is going to take you probably a month or two to get fit enough to where you're going faster. That guy is a bad pass because he actually did the opposite. He sped up. Give yourself plenty of time. Don't rush. You don't want to get halfway through and realize you're probably going to be late and then be stressing because that's when people make bad decisions on the road. And that's why a lot of car drivers are angry because, you know, I'm going to be late for work. I don't want to deal with the bullshit, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, plenty of time. Oh, here's another good one. I should have included this with food. Pack a snack. I am big on, I don't eat before I ride in the morning. You know, I usually like to ride early. Try to beat the sun a little bit so I don't, I'm not out in it. So, I don't eat first thing in the morning. On weekend rides, when I'm on my way back home, I will eat a Cliff Bar, and I have a second one in reserve, which actually reminds me I probably should stop and buy some today at some point. I have a snack, have something. Uh, some people like the, the squeezable things, the squeezable proteins. Um, I've never tried them. I've always been kind of a Cliff Bar guy, but that's from my days of mountain biking which was years ago I'm actually thinking about I have a couple of buddies I actually it's I have a friend who's got a couple of friends that they mountain bike on the weekends so I was thinking about getting in a ride with them at some point All right. let's go back to attacking a little bit I I eased off a little bit. Catch my breath. Oh, what a beautiful day, man. I do have another topic. What time are we at? Curious how long I've been on for. See what this truck behind me does. Move over. There's a different tundra. I've been on for half an hour, so I think it's time to switch topics. One last positive. We're going to place it as freeze pops. Okay, freeze pop. Even uh, today, when it's kind of cold outside, it's actually a good way to cool down and a uh, nice treat. Along with some watermelon, which I also have in the bag. We're going to wait a second for when I get up into this next community. And then we'll break into topic number two. Topic number two. I guess I can preface it. 9.3. At least I'm consistent, eh? I am trying to get faster. The biggest thing 
I struggle with when I get back on the bike is like right now I'm trying to do more work in lower gears so that I have you know I'm putting more power down to the pedal but I'm always worried that I'm gonna lose steam halfway up the hill which I'm already doing better than I was that first day back on all the way in top gear spinning and spinning and spinning going nowhere and your legs are just on fire it takes me usually about a month to get to a point where I feel like I'm doing pretty well I'm not quite there yet this is week number three of bike commuting this year 2023 I started last year like I said so I started my new job in December so in the middle of winter and I was uh I'd never bike commuted before, but I started, that was when I started looking it up. People, my dad was telling me that he honestly would probably prefer I didn't, but you know, the roads aren't, the roads out here aren't that bad. And I've told him many a time, look and cross for me, you could get in an accident in a car and die just as easily on these roads. So I come out here, I have a mirror, and I'm vigilant, and I'm safe. So I'd rather bike commute. So I spent most of that winter studying, especially with a bike blogger. I found his content, and he really did show me that it's possible, because he bikes all year long in St. Louis. He's had a couple accidents, but he's also recovered from him and he still goes. So, I don't know. To me, I think it was a, a great idea. YouTube is one of those things to me. It's love-hate. It's a love-hate relationship. There are days where I treat YouTube like any other social media. I do a, a lot of doom scrolling, especially like, it, it seems like with YouTube, I don't know if it's the algorithm or if it's just that I watch too much of it, but the big thing is you'll get, you get on a kick, you start watching a certain content, a certain person's content, until they say they'll have like one video. I did that with Sumito. Sumito Media. He makes good content. I don't dislike the guy. I think it was his Elon Musk video. Where I just... Morning. Get away from them. Before I continue lapping on. thing with uh, that Elon Musk videos I feel like everyone kind of got on the same bandwagon when Musk took over Twitter which was I don't know it's kind of mid in my opinion I was a huge fan of it acting like somehow this billionaire that we know the name of is worse than this billionaire that we didn't know the name of that wasn't a public figure running a multi-million dollar social media company and so far Musk has kind of held up his end of the park it's kind of but I don't like Twitter anyway a lot of the people on there are just miserable they will literally pick a fight with anybody about anything I could say right now that those trees over there those trees are green and Twitter freaks would want to debate me about it and say actually those are pine pine uh Horatio or something i don't know <laughs> it's like what what's wrong with you people no those are green and then they'd say i'm oppressing someone i'm a bad person are these for sale or are these for free 
Ah, that pack's a little too, a little much for me. Yeah, it's pretty worn out too. Yeah, I'm gonna say no, but that's a cool pack. It's a ski pack. big big youtuber watcher content consumer I do I, I really really enjoy it like I said though it's like it's like any social media or TV service those are those dogs I just said hello to YouTube actually for a couple of years. Not off it, but I didn't watch it as regularly. I was working, so I was pretty much daily watching, uh, listening to. Back then, it was before YouTube Red. It was before you could actually have YouTube on in the background and just listen to videos. Which once YouTube Red became a thing, I, I know I'm, I'm probably a lot of people's least favorite person, but I paid for it immediately because. It's so convenient. It's so convenient for me. Uh, I'm not saying you need to have a YouTube red or you're stealing, because I understand there are workarounds, but it's kind of like my same feeling with computers versus video game consoles. You know, I don't have to find an app that's going to be bricked in six months because YouTube finds out about it. I just log into YouTube. No matter what YouTube I'm on, I have no ads. And if I'm listening on a device, I can shut the screen off and just listen. Almost like a podcast. Well, pretty much, pretty much follow most of the big ones, most of the big names, you know. Uh, uh, Internet historian. Um, a lot of the big ones have fallen off in the recent years. I was a, I mean, PewDiePie is a polarizing figure, no matter which side you're on. I never liked his gaming content. I got into his commentary content that he made. Never, never a huge fan of, of, um, I guess vlog style content where you know you're going to places looking at things I don't know for some reason to me that's never been a huge interest I like bike vlogger stuff you know but it's different you know he's the biking is kind of secondary his content if it's a commentary video or he's talking about something it's something you can put on in the background and listen to I guess nowadays, I don't know. I like I like long form content more than anything. I'm not a huge fan of uh, um, gameplay anymore. I was at one time in my life. I started YouTube back in it must have been like 2009, 2008. No, it has to, had to have been close to like probably 2008 or 2009. That was when we first got wireless internet at my parents house 
and it was around the time of the 360 and I wanted RB of 2 the 40th day which is still one of my favorite video games of all time but there was a walkthrough that I found named SS Orange PKC he worked at Target during the day and he recorded gameplay content at night and don't ask me why I fell in love with his stuff man he was a great commentator he was just kind of he matched my sense of humor he was kind of witty and he was kind of funny and I watched him and solely him for years even when he was part of the creatures I pretty much just watched him I dabbled a little bit with those other guys but never really stuck with any of them none of them to me came off as super entertaining or genuine other than Sly Fox Hound. Here's the only other one I kind of like, but even him, his energy is too high for me. He is always too like, woo, woo, woo. But after that, my younger brothers kind of got me into, um, I don't want to say game reviews, but more of like Peanut Butter Game or John Tron, Space Hamster, Brutal Moose. I started watching those guys. The only one I was never really a huge fan of, like I did watch all of his content, was Jared. But I always got a weird vibe from him. You know, and then all that weird stuff came out about him and I said, oh, it all makes sense now. Um, I will still check up on Brutal Moose every now and then. I obviously, I still watch John Tron. I love his content. His is just goofy. I try to stay away from the political side of all the content creators. It's kind of the same way I feel about some bands. Like, uh, I'm not a Metallica fan, but you know, you can separate the art from the artist and appreciate the music they've written and even some of the new stuff they write, but I don't like them. And that's kind of how I feel. With, I mean, that's not how I feel with John, but his political view stuff. I just try not to get entangled with because it's not important. Um, and with John came GG or the Grumps. And I watched them for a long time. I actually only stopped watching them a couple years ago. Especially once they once they really locked into the algorithm and that way of making content. Their content just became so bland and boring. It's either Aaron gets mad at game, or they sit around and giggle about something stupid for 30 minutes. Which is not really what I came to watch. And then, a couple years ago, it was probably around the time of the, the rice gum content cop. My brothers got me into the more commentary side of YouTube. I started you know, watching iDubs, which a good, he made he made good content at one time. He doesn't now. Um, and they also got me interested in Pyro, Pyro Cynical, who I still watch all his stuff. And he's kind of the one who got me into essay style videos because they're just so damn entertaining. And it's something where you can have it on in the background and just listen. I've probably listened through to that um, Utopia review probably five or six times even though it's eight hours long it's good it's good stuff man and nowadays you know i'll just, you know sometimes you just be sitting there in the afternoon and you're kind of like what do i want to watch and you know you're just okay i want to watch a video about um You know, this interaction between these two people. Why don't these two people like each other? And then you find some video essay that's 10 minutes long that someone did about, you know, Keemstar and, you know, I don't know, David Gresh. I have no idea. I'm just pulling names out of nowhere. 
And it's like, why don't they like each other? And it's like, oh, because David Crush was a psycho. And he poisoned his followers. This was the interaction that they, they had together. I didn't even realize. And I, I don't know how I pulled David Crush out of thin air. It must be in my subconscious. My subconscious. I think, I can't remember exactly which one he, he is. He was a cult leader of some kind. Some crazy. Was he this, the, the, actually he might not have been. Well, no, he was crazy, but he wasn't as bad as some of the other ones. If I'm thinking of the right guy, but we're going to, we're going to drop that. Which reminds me, you know, it was probably, I've been on the horror kick when it comes to content for a while. Um, you know, there's chills, which he actually at one time, believe it or not, made halfway decent content. I wouldn't say it was good, but it was watchable. <gasps> Hi, little puppy dog. Where do you belong? Where are you going? Hey, hey, where are you going? Come here. Where do you belong? Uh-oh, that's weird. I don't like that. But nobody's out and about. Is there a door open there? Nope. I'm gonna look around. I just don't want him to get hurt. Let's see if we can find a person. He's limping too. Kind of worries me a little bit. The yeah, lights are on, but that could just be because it's nighttime. A wee while ago. I'm not just going to go knocking on doors looking for a dog owner. He didn't have a collar on. If he had a collar, I probably would have stopped and grabbed him. It's just, that was weird. He's just walking himself. Thankfully out here, even if, you know, like he, like he got into the woods and he found something, he's more than willing, he's more than likely to actually be able to find home again. So I'm not too, too worried about it. He wasn't chasing me. I don't think he came out of his yard because of me, but I don't know, that was weird. He actually could have, and that's why I didn't stop him, because he could have been going home. That's why you need to put collars on your dogs, so that people know where they belong. Yeah, this pyrocynical. And then trying to think of... Oh yeah, horror, horror content. So, like I said, I've been a fan of Chills for a couple years now. He used to make good content. And then, you know, when his you know, reading content, it was always, always really good. And then Dark, I found the Dark Solomonoid, or however the hell you say his name. He also does readings, and I really, really adored that content. Um, I'm trying to think of, oh yeah, and Wendigoon. Started watching Wendigoon. You know, around that time too, like two years ago. And I really, really enjoy that content, horror content, where it's kind of uh, you know, it's, it's it, you can immerse yourself a little better. But last year, I'm trying to think of around what time it was. So it was starting to get, starting to get warm out. It was starting to get kind of. Uh, summary around that time Let's go this way I 
think it was I think it was in March. I think it was during the plumbing heating cooling convention up in Augusta. But I was I was getting ready to start cycle commuting. I had my GMC Denali at home I was fixing up and I was sitting around and a YouTube recommended popped up for Manly Badass Hero and it was the Strawberry Witch game which looked kind of cutesy and I was I was like you know what it says that it's a horror game let's give it a try and it was I mean it's I'm not gonna sit here and say I think it's an astounding horror game it's a visual novel and it looks cutesy it becomes dark it's like Doki Doki it's like all you know um, but I enjoyed it for what it was stupid little horror game it was entertaining and then from there I kind of just got sucked in and you know I think it was around that time he released um, I can't remember what, it, what the second game was I remember what the first game was I watched but I can't remember what the second one I watched was I'm thinking I might not get a green here let's see I can't see that light. that light looks like it's green so I don't think I'm gonna get a green so we're actually going to breaking the law breaking the law They don't have really good sensors around these parts. <sighs> yeah, mainly, I, I, like I said, can remember the first video. Can't really remember the second one. And then, for some reason, my brain wants to say I've been watching Librarian longer, but I don't think I have. Because I can remember, it was hot this day. It was an afternoon, and I was kind of bored. And so I was scrolling through my feed. A second. Let's get down through here. Oh. so it should be plenty of time but yeah um, I started on my way I'm sorry I was an afternoon it was warm out so I want to say I've been watching Manly for a while at that point but I don't feel like I was I don't know the time just doesn't make sense in my head like I said it was nice and warm on on this afternoon and it could have just been the heat was on and I was sweating and I made potato salad and potato salad reminds me of something, something like that but I watched uh, Portal 2 The Office Prank parts 1, 2, and 3 by the librarian and ever since pretty much every afternoon I'll look up what's, you know, what's the new manly video and you know I'll sit around and watch dinner and watch I'll eat dinner and watch that and then once a week, probably the weekend, because he doesn't upload super often, I will I will put on librarian, look for what he put out for the week, and just kind of scroll through. Because usually it's either he puts out one a day, or, or two a week, or one a week. I'll look to see what he's done. And, uh, you know, usually there's one video that catches my eye. I've been into that whole, um, uh, from the, from the, from the fog Minecraft series. Nothing coming. It's a good series. I highly, highly recommend if you like Minecraft with a tinge of horror. It actually, I'm not embarrassed to say it, but it made me. It made me get back into Minecraft again, which happens every once in a while. 
why I own it on every console I've ever owned because, you know, it happens where, oh, I want to play Minecraft, but I don't want to bust the switch out just for that. It's funny, these houses in here kind of remind me of the town, the townhouses down in Old Orchard. Which, here where I'm at, in Gorham, there is no water. We're not by a body. I mean, we have the Przemski River, but it's closer to Wyndham in North Gorham than it is to Center Gorham, where we're at. Dodge the pill bug. There's been a lot of washout this spring just because of the amount of water we've had. today. My brother has always been really into goofy style content. So he likes, um, you know, kind of silly videos, which I can enjoy at times too. We were always big fans of the, the YTPs. But we had to be careful because a lot of times they'd edit characters in, swears. So when we were kids, we had to find clean ones. One of the, uh, but because of that, and you know, we've kind of stayed on that same train for years. So I like um, Hugbees has been kind of filled in that void since YTPs kind of has been murdered. They still exist. You can find it for shows like Breaking Bad. But, I don't know, they've lost some of the charm over the years because you can't use as much copyrighted material as you used to. No left turn. That's a good thing I don't know which way is left and right. I'm kidding, of course. But good luck. Nothing coming. I'm just going to go. Now here we're going to take another right turn. I do this because this hill that I'm about to climb sucks. I hate it. Been on the bike for an hour. Tired, which is to be expected. That's why I brought plenty of watermelon. That and I'm expecting a good weekend for Ross. chat about on the way home Ross Chastain and NASCAR in general 
the expected outcome we're going to have this weekend. I think it'll be a good race. I'm really hoping that someone other than Hendrick brings the power this weekend. I'd even be fine with seeing 2311. Actually, I'm always fine. 2311. I just... My biggest, not the issue, but my biggest thing that I'm worried about every time is the difference between Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace is Tyler Reddick can close out a can close out a race where Bubba has a hard time. Morning. still say if it hadn't been for Kyle Larson last weekend, Bubba would have had that win at the All-Star race. But it is what it is. It's too bad. You know, I... Oh yeah, there's a dog running around in that yard next to me. There's a cute little pup. It's too bad because every time I think that we're making good progress, that Bubba's doing better, He's looking cleaner. He always has to have a controversy. This one was out of his control. Last year it was the Kyle Larson incident where he basically he took our Kyle Larson and himself out of the race for no reason. For no reason. And then wanted to get in a shoving match with him down on the infield. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, after the race was done this last weekend at North Wilkesboro, someone hacked into or they say hacked the guy figured out the radio channel that bubble was using and got on it then he said go back where he came from if you don't know daryl wallace jr or bubba wallace is one of the actual first competitive and good black drivers we've had in a while he's the first black driver to get a win since a long long time ago been a while definitely first of this century which is too bad but you know i'm willing to bet you larson kyle larson who's one of my favorite drivers i'm not a bubble walls hater I'm not a fan of him i don't think he my issue with him is he's not consistent and he's too he's too mouthy i like guys like my favorite driver right now is actually Ross Chastain, but that's just because of his backstory. A humble, humble watermelon farmer turned NASCAR driver. You know, he's just like me. He's just, well, no, I wasn't a farmer, but you know, just a kid living out in the rural west. And one day, the opportunity strikes. You know, he goes out, he gets in every ride he can, and he just races. And you know what he's done in those X amount of years? is he's shown consistency. You know, he knows how to finish a race. He also knows how to wreck people, which is huge. I think the biggest thing Chastain's gotta get over is his, the aura that everyone has about him right now. Everyone always wants to call him destructive. And yeah, I get it. He knows how to wreck a car. But he also knows how to win a race. So, I don't know. We'll talk more about NASCAR later. I think it'll be a good day. I think it'll be a good weekend. Go get changed.